Hello, and welcome to the Minimalist DDC. My name is Chris, and today I want to talk to you about my Blade Show experience. I just got home from Blade Show. Um, I live in Alabama, so it's not very hard for me to pop over to Atlanta for a day trip. Decided to go over, and um, I don't really have a, a script for, it, for this. I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk with you about my thoughts while they're still fresh on my head. So, I had three goals when I went, went this year. Uh, I wanted to meet makers and designers. That was number one. I wanted to see and talk to the people that uh, make the products that bring me joy, that I uh, obsess about and read about, and probably, you know, make the things that, why are you watching this video right now? So that was a cool experience. I want to talk about a little bit about that. Um, I wanted to handle some knives I've not seen before. So one of the neat things about going to a trade show like this is there's a lot of products on hand that you can pick up and handle and play around with, but there's really not another way to, to, to do it. So um, up till now, if I wanted to handle a knife, I pretty much have to buy it, have it shipped to my house, and then if I don't like it or it doesn't suit my needs, usually just sell it and sometimes take a little hit on the on the sales price to uh, have the pleasure of reviewing it and seeing what, it, what it's like. You know, sometimes you can go down to a... Um, an outdoor store that has a, a decent selection. We do have one here in Birmingham, but the like if you wanted to handle a Vero or something, those you just can't. Like you have to know someone who owns one or buy it yourself. So that was really neat to be able to go booth to booth, uh, talk to the manufacturers, pick up their products, and actually put them in hand. And lastly, I wanted to get a new knife. Had the itch. Didn't know what I wanted. Had a few ideas, but um, I. Uh, I definitely wanted something to commemorate my first blade show and uh that's this guy over here if you've seen my instagram story you may not already know what that what's in that box but um since it's the last thing i did at blade show we'll get to it last um uh and if you aren't already following me on instagram please pop over there and give me a follow i'd appreciate it so i kind of wanted to i had a priority of list of and this is in no particular order um other than trm to uh go check out talk to them uh, see what they had to offer and um, just look through their stuff. So I kind of want to just give you a, a rundown of what my day was like, what it was like to go to, to Blade Show and talk to these people, and um, what I learned. So uh, we'll, we'll start at the top, TRM. This was the first place I wanted to go, absolutely. So TRM makes some wonderful knives. This right here is the Neutron 2. The knife I had prioritized in my head that I wanted, if it was available, was a shadow. So I got there on Saturday about noon. Um, apparently all the shadows had sold out by like 11 o'clock on Friday morning. So none were available. And that's one of the things I, I kind of came to realize about this whole experience is Blade Show is, in, for all intents and purposes, a trade show. It's a show where manufacturers and distributors go to show off the new products, to talk to one another. Uh, it's not really a uh, place to sell their wares. What they, they are selling things there. Most most vendors do have things for sale, but it isn't, it's not, you're not gonna go there and be able to go shopping for everything you want. So TRM was cool. Didn't get to uh, talk to them very much. They were a very busy booth. Um, I did get to handle one of the uh, machined all metal shadows. Uh, that thing is heavy. Uh, was really amazingly well machined. They do phenomenal uh, machine work there. It was gorgeous to handle, but um, it, an all-metal one like that, just not for me and my everyday carry needs. I would love to actually get my hands on one of the um, the regular shadows, though. Uh, I got to put my hands on a, an Atom for the first time. That was neat. Uh, the Atom, if you don't know, is just a bigger brother of this guy. It's a uh, Phenomenal knife. I'll probably pick one up one day. Uh, it, to me, in my needs, it would uh, have a similar use case as this. So I don't, I'm not prioritizing it. Uh, I got to handle uh, one of their smaller knives, the Nerd. It's a cool little fifth pocket knife. Uh, really uh, enjoyable little fidget knife, especially the new ones they have that have the hole in there. Makes it a pleasure to open. Uh, doesn't really fit the use case of what I need day to day probably pick up one at some point in time because they're they're neat but uh, it was fun to handle it and I got to experience the 3d milled titanium scales for the uh, the neutron uh, almost pulled the trigger on picking up a set the thing is I have so many titanium knives 
that another titanium knife kind of just gets lost in the mix. I really like the uh, Merlot micarta scales on this guy. Uh, it's the only knife I have that's even remotely this color, and I really like the, the pop of color with the purple. So um, I'm very happy with the way this one looks right now. May pick up some scales for it in the future, but uh, that's where I am right now. Uh, the next one, uh, Chris Reeves Knives. Really cool booth. Uh, they were, as you can imagine, very busy. Didn't get to talk to anyone at that, that booth uh, in depth. Um, got to put my hands on a large Sabenza. I've only ever owned a small Sabenza. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, they had some, some raffles there, which uh, it was basically a raffle to get the chance to win a opportunity to buy a knife. So very cool on them, uh, letting some people have the opportunity to buy some cool products. They had um, some fixed blades there that were neat to see. I have never seen a uh, um, Chris Reeves fixed blade in person before, so it was nice to talk with him about that and actually put hands on them. So that was neat. Um, next one, uh, Demco Knives. I, they had the 80, 20, and 20.5s, like the the knives that's all the rage. Uh, I, again, never handled one before. It was really neat to actually put one in hand and um, try the, the shark lock out for myself. And the fidget factor of it is like an 11 out of 10. Uh, being able to just pull back on it and flick it in and out uh, was very neat. Uh, it's a little more, it's a little tactical for my tastes. Uh, got that kind of Rambo knife vibe going on. Um, very much appreciate it for what it is. Not, it's not a me knife. So, uh, I decided that that was not going to be my purchase for the day, but it was cool to actually, uh, put hands on it, see what it is. The, the guys at the booth were extremely attentive. They were answering customers questions. They were really, really, um, good about treating their customers. Right. I was impressed by that. And so very much enjoyed uh, stopping by that booth. Uh, the next one, Hinderer. Um, never held a Hinderer before either. So uh, the Hinderer booth was neat. They had some of their automatics there. The automatic knives, um, they don't kick as hard as, as something, like, something like a Protec, but very serviceable, serviceable type of automatic action. Uh, the Hinderer, uh, like the XM18 and 24 and all those things, like Hinderer has never been a, a brand that spoke to me. Uh, flipper tabs, not really my jam. Um, I like them, but putting hands on it, I, I see what people enjoy about a hinderer. The, the feel in hand is very good. The, the construction exceptionally well built. Um, and maybe I'm alone on this. I like, uh, knives that, ha that have the same scale on both sides. Hinderer typically has that, that one nice show side scale and the back side is just all titanium. To me, it looks unfinished. For some reason, I don't know. It's a, it's a personal preference for sure, but it's um, not my thing. And it was nice to actually put one in hand and realize, yeah, this is just not me. But I have a, a definite appreciation for what they do. Um, also, you know, there's all, all that drama about Hinderer and suing that YouTuber for having an opinion about their heat treatment. You know what? I just can't support that. And that, even if I was going to purchase one of their knives... That's another thing that would turn me off. And of course, I didn't talk to him about it or anything like that. It's not the time and place. But um, yeah, another decision about why I'm not interested in such a thing. Um, next one, We Civivi. They had a very large booth. This is the Appalachian Drifter 2 uh, from Civivi. Um, the, the square footage of their booth was much larger than almost anyone else's, maybe... Uh, rivaled by Spyderco and Microtech, um, they had a, they had showcases on all four sides of their booth, uh, with most of it being uh, well about half of it being we half of it being Civivi. It was neat. Um, it was a good experience to actually do the uh, second goal here, put hands on knives I've never held before. So um, I have a interest in a Black Void Opus. Uh, I've had my eye on one for a while wanted to actually feel what the what the top flipper felt like and how it felt in hand was kind of impressed i'm going to continue to look for one of those probably on the secondary um the esprit uh let's see what else did i handle there was the um the subjugator that was a neat one uh they had a couple um like the alt civivi altis and a few other ones that i wanted to feel in hand um it was a good experience to to do that as far as the 
the staff running it. I think they had a lot of people there that weren't very experienced. I asked a few questions about blade steel, heat treat, grinds, and I got basically, you know, I just work here, man. Like, that was, it really wasn't a good experience to be able to talk to someone there. It didn't feel like anyone there knew a whole lot about the knives that they were trying to sell. Uh, they could really just tell you what was on the card in front of the knife. So, wasn't particularly impressed by that, but the fact that I got to go and handle all the knives and put hands on them, see what the action's like, enjoyed that a lot. Next one, uh, one I was really looking forward to is uh, Pena. So, it actually took me a little while to find Pena's booth. Um, it was not very, the signage wasn't great, and I had to go consult the, the website and look at the floor plan and actually try to figure out where where he was and so um when i actually got there i got to actually meet enrique pina incredibly nice guy immediately shook my hand we talked for a bit um he had a a prototype on the table that was a, a mula but with a button lock it was super sweet i cannot wait for that to hit the market it was incredibly fun to fidget with the, the prototype but uh I brought a couple knives because I wanted to actually talk with him about it. That was one of my goals, is talk to Mr. Pena about some of the knives and some of the things that I would do differently. Um, you know, if that isn't just a bit of hubris, hubris to say that, hey, I love your stuff, but here's how I would improve on it, right? I'm not a knife maker. Um, but when I pulled out the few knives I want to talk about, this is one of them, he immediately said, oh, you changed my clip. And so, yeah, um, you can see on some of my other videos where I've done reviews or unboxings, I talk about wh why I hate Pena's clips. And um, it was neat. We had a good conversation about it. He uh, gave me his thoughts on why he doesn't particularly care for this style of clip on a knife. And we talked about some, some ways that maybe that could be mitigated with, with still having the option for deep carry. Uh, he took a few pictures of the, the clips that I put on here and asked me where I got them. So we had a good conversation. It was, um, uh, it was fun to actually have my opinion listened to by someone I very much admire. So very much enjoy talking with, with Enrique. Uh, next, uh, Hogue. Hogue had a pretty big booth. Um, one of my goals with going to Hogue was to put hands on one of the new, uh, the new and improved DECAs. Uh, I'd seen a couple knife content creators, you know, review it and whatnot. And I've seen everything from good reviews to like, it, it feels like plastic. And so, you know, I was like, let me go see what this is about. Cause I really like the bug out. So this is a, it's in the same vein as a bug out, right? It's an access lock. It's, um, that, that kind of ideal EDC size. So let me, let me go take a look. And so when I got there, um, there was about three or four people working the booth and two or three of them were, uh, engaged with other, uh, uh, patrons or, you know, convention goers. And there was one guy who was just like milling around, um, this is the one booth where I didn't feel actually welcome at. Like, no one said hello, which is, what you know, every other booth, as soon as you walk up, they greet you and say, hey, you know, what can we do for you? How can we help you? Like, what would you like to know about? Like, in my entire time standing at that booth, not one person said hello. Not one person even acknowledged I was standing there. Um, I eventually asked if I could see the, the DECA. I, I played with it a little bit. Um... It's not for me. It's the the action was stiff. The handles feel like plastic. I don't care for the compound grind. Yada yada yada. I'm just just not a fan. So like, put the knife down, walked away. Just not a great experience. And I get it. Those people have to be on twenty four seven when they're at a convention. There's people coming up asking the same questions over and over again. I'm not throwing any shade or blame. I'm just saying I didn't have the greatest experience at that booth. Text uh, Microtech. So I went to Microtech, uh, really cool booth. Uh, they were one of the larger exhibitors as well. Uh, they had so many of their, their products there and that was actually one of the knives I thought I might come home with because I don't own an automatic and uh, I think I want to add an OTF to my collection. So wanted to go and so they were really nice. They let me you know fiddle with the, the OTFs but I'm very specific about what I want. I want a, I want a drop point, I want it in stone wash, I want uh, either a black or a coyote handle like I'm I have in mind what I want and they just didn't have it in inventory in the booth that day so you know I'm gonna uh, one of my local stores does carry Microtech so I, I'm probably go patronize them and see what they have available for me 
at some point, but uh, definitely worth checking out. I enjoyed it. Uh, next one, uh, Spyderco. This is my pair of three. Um, Spyderco was a cool little booth. Uh, it felt much more like a store than it felt like a exhibition booth. They had a lot of product and they were selling it and there's a lot of people there. As you can imagine, Spyderco is a popular brand. I didn't hang around too much. Uh, I, I browsed what they had to sell and see if there's anything new like prototypes, but um, I didn't want to fight the crowds on that one, so I, I moved on. Vero. Uh, Vero was a very cool booth. Uh, nothing to sell. Uh, they were only a exhibiting um, there, but I had never put hands on a Vero before. So um, I got to, I really enjoyed the Synapse and the Synapse Mini. Both of them uh, had really snappy actions, good lockup. Uh, they have the aesthetic that I kind of like with the, uh, the titanium and the micarta. So um, I'm definitely going to be, you know, hunting for a um, Vero in the future. I'm definitely need to sign up for their emails to make sure that I, whenever they do their next drop, that I get on that. But uh, the people at Vero, extremely helpful. Very nice. Um, answered all my questions. Very knowledgeable uh, staff. Um, a plus. Very enjoyed. Very much enjoyed the Vero booth. Uh, Protec. This is a Malibu with the textured handle. Uh, Protec uh, booth was also pretty swarmed. I didn't stay there very long. Um, got to see a few of the um, a few of their new automatics. Those were kind of neat. Uh, my local store does have a, a very good selection of Protec, so uh, I have access to them pretty much when I want them, so I didn't feel the need to um, hang around that booth and, and try everything. But very neat. It looks like that they were helping their customers, which is great, and it was a good experience. Tactile Knife Co. This is the Rockwall and Magna Cut. Um, swung by there. Uh, I talked with um, one of their employees for a few minutes uh, very nice guy answered my questions we talked about the history a little bit he answered some of my questions because I have this uh, this flipper here that has a actually has a number on it I was like you know why did y'all stop doing the numbers what happened with that so he gave me some of the background about the first people to buy a a rock wall got a numbered one and they're not doing in that anymore so there's only about 300 numbered ones which you know kind of cool maybe a collector's item um, which uh, I talked a little bit about some of the problems I've had with mine, uh, but you know, they have had great customer service. They've fixed my rock wall every time there's been a defect with it and, um, really cool booth. Uh, I did stay around long because I, I have a rock wall. I have a tactile turn pen and I have a tactile turn pencil. Like I have these things. Um, I have I had other, other things on my hit list. So good guys. Enjoyed it. Um, really cool. Next one, uh, Sharp by Design. This is the Mini Tempest. Let's start over here. So the Sharp by Design booth uh, was kind of like a drive-by. Um, they didn't have anything to sell and almost nothing to display. It, I think they they brought some of their Arch Nemesis customs and they sold out within minutes of Blade Show uh, uh, opening and the only knife they had really on the table when I got there was the um, was the Knife Nuts podcast of this guy which, which has the kind of like the modified Tonto blade so I got to flick that a few times to see what that was like um, really neat Brian and Doe the you know sharp mind design uh, knife maker uh, he wasn't in the booth at the moment so I didn't get a chance to talk with him um, so that was it I'm not disappointed uh, it's just I kind of knew with, with that with a small custom night maker, you're just not going to have a whole lot. I was but hoping for a few display models that I could actually, you know, put a hands on an arch nemesis and see what it felt like in hand. Artisan CJ, CJRB, um, swung by there. Um, they were doing a lot of business. There was a lot of, uh, people coming by that booth to buy things. So like, I'm sure they sold a lot of like Rias and, uh, they had a few newer models that I, I flicked and I enjoyed, uh, messing around with those. So, um, not a very memorable experience, but it was kind of cool. Uh, they were, uh, the people running the booth were very nice, very, um, welcoming. So in, in interesting with them. Uh, the next one, uh, QSP. This is the pink one. So I, uh, I swung by there. They had a lot of knife models. They had the, their new mini penguin. They had, 
a ton of knives that I didn't even know they made. So it was kind of nice to talk with them about that for a few minutes and get some insight on what they're doing and how um, what what's in the pipeline. Uh, they were very uh, helpful. They were always willing to put a knife in my hand to let me hold it. Um, very nice guys. Very uh, A plus experience. Next, uh, Benchmade. Uh, this is the bug out. I only spent a few minutes at Benchmade. I have like four Benchmade knives now. I have the I have the knives I want, so I wasn't so um, needy with uh, wanting to to hold things. Uh, but it was nice to see what they had. I didn't see any any new models that I wasn't already aware of, but uh, it was cool. Uh, they they seemed very nice and very very helpful. Uh, next is, oh, let me skip that one. Go to Leon Ma. Leon Ma, uh, I very much like his designs. I think his design language is stellar, and I don't own one of his knives yet, uh, but I did get to play and flick with all the knives he had available. He was unfortunately busy with a paying customer, so I completely understand that. He was more, um, was dealing with their needs because they were buying some knives from him. But I got to experience the knives that were on the table. None of them really fit my taste, so I decided to uh, move on. Okay, so let's clean off the table for the last thing. I bought a new knife. And so I was not prepared to buy this particular knife. Did not expect to. But as I was looking around the show hall and deciding on you know all my options of what I had available to me, I kept coming back to uh, Olambic Customs and flicking around some of their knives. And so they had... Um, a couple of knives on the table that were, I don't know if, if they were, if they're calling them blade show exclusives, but he said that they were for the show. A um, little bit of a language barrier there. He, he spoke very good English. I just very hard to understand him. He had a thick accent, but um, uh, I ended up getting a whippersnapper. And so this guy right here just spoke to me. Um, it was gorgeous sitting on the table. It, uh, what we're dealing with here is like a, a finely polished carbon fiber, um, highly polished bolsters. We have a um, titanium pivot that is anodized blue. I like, it has the, a matching anodized backspacer. Uh, all the carbon fiber on both sides is just, it's not like slick, but it is, smooth and so it's a very interesting i'm trying to get as best as i can a view of that it's just an interesting carbon fiber texture that i have not seen on another knife and so this guy is phenomenal um i don't own another custom knife this is the first uh one i've ever purchased and the difference in a custom knife and a production knife everyone says you know it's worlds different and let me tell you this is this is good. Um, so it has a flipper tab on top. So you can, of course, thumb flick it. You got your over the hand flick. My, one of my favorites is the, the knuckle flick where you just put your index finger over it and get it out. But also with this hole, like it, it is a spidey hole type experience. And well, there we go. Um, it's, it's just good. I don't have any problem with middle finger flicking it. I don't have with thumb flicking it. It's just, it's fidgety as all hell. And it's got a, a great detent and a phenomenal um, lockup. So this is uh, this is really good. I'm, I'm very impressed by um, what they were able to do. Um, if you see this, it comes with this. Like, I'm not a lanyard person, but it, apparently this is the Alambic Whippersnapper bead. It's just a little skull. Um, It'll stay with a knife in case I ever sell it. It's just not my, like, I'm just not a lanyard person. Sorry. But, yeah, this guy is top notch. So that's my Blade Show experience. I didn't really go in with any preconceived notions of, like, what I was going to experience or um, what I uh, could expect. I just went in with a few goals and a list of manufacturers that I wanted to experience and uh, just kind of let it happen. So, um Thank you so much for hanging out with me and let me talk about my Blade Show experience. Uh, if you were there, please let me know how it went for you. I very much appreciate your like and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.